everyone, we are back with another renovation project. This time we are building an office in our garden as the final piece to the puzzle of our year long house renovation project. Throughout this series I'll be sharing the whole process from start to finish of undergoing a building project like this. Enjoy! not going to be much longer that you can do this. I swear I say this on every vlog, but really, it really isn't, because we are almost finished. Off she pops. This one is still trying to get out. She's been wanting to to be outside all day with the builders. But hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another one of my garden office vlogs. So today's episode has been filmed over the course of the last eight weeks where they have been making so much progress and putting the finishing touches on the garden room. So everything from building the frame to insulation, cladding, doing the electrics, laying the floor, painting, decorating, everything. So yeah, big changes were made in the last two months and I can't wait to show you. It is now a room. <laughs> it's been fully plastered. So you can really see now the size of the room. Also, first fix electrics have been done. So second fix is gonna happen in a couple of days time. We have the cupboard here, which is gonna have a door on it, but we are planning to panel this wall so the door will be hidden. It'll be kind of like a, a thin MDF door. They're gonna make it to size of the frame, so that'll blend in nicely. Final thing for today, they have begun cladding. So this is what our cladding's gonna look like. These are scaffolding boards that have been cut down and sanded, and we had them all different sizes, so it just adds a little bit of interest to the detail of the cladding and what they've done is they've cut the boards that will be the same size that run down the front as well. I mean obviously here's going to be door but like on this bit here and on the shed door. This is their workstation for cutting all the cladding so my garden is well and truly out of action again. That grass. <laughs> It just didn't stand a chance again, did it? I started changing my mind on everything and um, the cladding on the outside, which you can see here, isn't the original cladding we were gonna go for. It was gonna be a wood called Douglas fir, which is like a reddish color, a bit like the shed there. And I wanted that really like, beautiful yellow color, even though Douglas fir will silver with age, all wood silvers pretty much to the same kind of color um, of these kind of pines that we're working with as options. But I wanted the yellow wood from the get-go. It did cost more because these are reclaimed scaffolding boards, which they have had to sand down and then cut to all this different size. I think it looks so beautiful and it is totally worth the upspend there because I'm so happy with that. This is why you can say a price at the start, but once you start making amends, the cost changes, which is why I will share the like final cost at the end in the final episode, because some things have changed. <laughs> These are the pivot doors, so for the shed, um, and they go like this, so they go slightly in, but it's very cool. And then that will be paneled on the front, and then we're just gonna get, instead of having an actual door handle, we're just, just gonna get a lock. So the only way to open it is with the lock and key. Um, Freddy's bike is the only thing in here right now. I just put OSB, floor to ceiling and all walls on here. It was much cheaper than plastering it. Um, we've got electrician coming back on Tuesday, so he's gonna do lights and sockets and switches. Got a light switch in here as well. So we've got a ceiling light and then we've also gone for a socket in here just because this is gonna be a workstation. So we'll be able to like charge tools and stuff. Also, we think this will be maybe a little potting shed, which is why we went for a light in here as well. I wanna show you the cladding on the side because it's actually quite different to the front cladding we went for. This is called a feather edge wood, so it's just in a shiplap style. It's really durable, obviously totally fine as um, exterior wood. However, it is so much cheaper than those sanded and bespoke cut scaffolding boards that we put on the front. So to keep costs down, we went with this feather edge on all sides that aren't visible. So the back and then both sides because the building is as wide as our garden and then it's obviously fences. So glad my neighbor likes Winnie as much as we do and Winnie likes her more than she likes us. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 
There's a few concerns about where our wonderful wisteria has gone now that we've put a building at the end of our garden. I would not be giving her up lightly. That was a 30th birthday present from my parents, so yeah, I'm keen for her to survive as well. They actually dug her up and put her just in the earth in our garden so that they could build the office and now we realise there's no actual place in the back garden for her, so she is in the front and she is on the front of our house and she's looking good and she's just started flowering as well because it's wisteria season. So we actually don't need any planning permission for this type of build because it falls within the legal height limits for planning consent, so most people don't get planning permission for building a garden room. This is 2.5 in height. This is why they were so meticulous with re-leveling the earth under our patio because it absolutely had to be right. It cannot be an inch over that legal height limit because planning restrictions and laws are no joke and you have to follow them and if you don't, they will literally make you take your building down. So we didn't want to get into any kind of pickle like that. <laughs> this is probably one of the reasons why garden rooms are so popular actually because you don't need planning permission. So when you submit a planning application it can take like up to 12 to 16 weeks for it to be approved and with garden offices especially if you go with a company that supplies everything from your designs, materials and project managers it, you don't have to do really anything. Very convenient, it's an easy build project to take on. The inside is 2.2 and it's a slightly slanted roof as you can see and um, that's just for rainwater to fall because the guttering is at the back. I had these like visions of like this amazing vaulted ceiling and I was wanting to panel it and the reality is that the slanted ceiling is actually barely even visible in real life so <laughs> That just ended before it even begun. <laughs> We're not panelling the ceiling. We are, however, panelling the wall. Today is such an exciting day. The tongue and groove panelling is going on the wall. So they've just cut out where the sockets are going to go and then they're going to place this sheet against there. We managed to get from Travis Perkins full height uh, tongue and groove. A lot of the time when you go to Wix it's only like 1.2 metres tall, which is here but they got to the ceiling, so it was 2.4, and this is 2.2, so they cut it down a bit. So it's beautiful, it's, it's like one seamless panel, and it's gonna go all the way across, and then it's gonna have a secret little cupboard door there. Oh, so exciting! Electricians came yesterday, and they put my lights on. I'm so glad I went with the brushed stainless steel. I almost went with the brass, but it kind of blended into this color, so that's a very subtle pop against the wood and then for the inside we went with brass so we've got the dimmer switch and then we've got two sockets on this wall we're going to do a console here socket there and then there's two sockets behind there which is where the desk is going to go i've got to say this electrician has done such a tidy job such perfect work look at that not a chip or a crack Perfect. And these are the recess lights. They've left them kind of just popping out for now so that the decorator can fill and finish around it and then we'll push them in and they'll be fully flush. We're getting there. We really are. <laughs> then we start on this. Bifolds arrived today. Here they are. So these are the frames and they got delivered separate to the glass. That is the glass at the end there. There's seven sheets of glass because three per bifold, this is ours and then our neighbours, and then our neighbour is also putting in a glass door on the side of her office where we have got like our internal cupboard. She's got a tree that she's kept so her like office is built around it and then she's put a door in to let herself out to the tree to tend it and keep gardening stuff there. No Winnie, come on, we're going in. Come on, we're going in, inside. Good girl. Good girl. Doors arrived, they were a bit delayed because the spec that we'd requested on them wasn't initially made, so they did it in the reverse, so they had to remake the door, or remake the frame anyway. And they're in such demand at the moment, so there's a complete backlog. But they're here, um, they're getting installed on Monday, April 11th, and that is the final thing of building to be done, and then the painters are coming in, and the floor's being laid, and then we're done. Doors are going in, they're just sizing up, making sure that the right doors are going in the right offices, because ours slide this way and my neighbours slide that way, so we can't mix them up. <laughs> this was supposed 
just initially be like a three to four week project and it has ended up being almost 12 weeks. Now, a few reasons for delays. Delays happen in life. Like you should really buffer in a little bit of a time frame for delays, just like you should buffer an additional budget because things rarely ever go 100% according to plan. So obviously, door company made them incorrectly so they had to remake them that I think added like a six week delay to the build and also I obviously changed the spec of the wood on the front so then new wood had to be ordered there's an endless list of why delays can happen they just do happen <laughs> the biggest delay issue that's happening in the building world right now is supply issue there was like a huge timber shortage for like the last year and a bit so that obviously is tricky, especially when it's literally a wooden house in your garden. So timber is like the main ingredient to this. Let's talk flooring. Got some floor samples here. A range in cost and quality. Garden Customs originally put in £150 on our cost sheet for laminate flooring. That was because we said we were happy to go with the cheapest. Now I think about it, I don't think I want laminate. I think it's such a small room that going a little bit more expensive per cost per square metre doesn't really matter when it's only 10 square metres. Like when we were, hello puppet, when we were doing downstairs in, <laughs> yes hello, when we were doing the main house build, it was a lot of square footage that we had to cover with flooring. So, so this was originally the laminate I'd ordered from B&Q. It was so cheap. I think it was like £30 a pack and we'd only need two packs. But then I ordered some beautiful wood from Luxury Flooring Company and just holding them together, you could just tell the difference in quality. And actually on screen, it's not even coming up as obvious as it is in here that that is photographed. Um, so unfortunately we decided not to go with this. I did order a couple of squares as well so I could see what the design looks like when you, you have more than one. Because the thing I find with flooring is you can't tell what a whole floor is going to look like from one sample. And to be honest these are still quite generous in size for samples. So if you can order a couple of each one so you can kind of lay them together and see where the pattern is going to go with a bigger kind of square footing. These were £60 a square metre which was kind of too higher price point and they still needed to be treated so they need to be oiled. So after ordering a few samples online I ended up just going into the local carpet shop near me and I found a UV oiled flooring. It was available to be delivered the next day so that's what I went with. It ended up being £40 a square metre in the end. So it was a bit more expensive than the original 150 we'd put in the budget because it actually came up at 390 but it's beautiful. I'm going to show you it. As you can see, next to the floor we have inside, it's quite similar. So when you go from inside to the garden office, you won't notice that much difference in the floor. This, however, is a little bit thinner, which is why it was cheaper than the flooring that we ordered in here. This was £60 a square metre, this is £40 a square metre, which I think is actually a considerable difference, especially when you are kind of putting a lot of flooring down. One thing I would say if you are ordering it yourself is absolutely make sure that if you're going for underfloor heating, you make sure your floor is compatible with underfloor heating. So not all of them are. It will always say in this, the specification on a website, that always double check. So the flooring is just getting finished. It is looking so much like a room now that we have that first mist of coat on and the floor's going down. As you can see here, they've glued together the planks and the straps are just holding it all in place until it dries. And then tomorrow it's time for the second fix of electrics. Okay, well, that is it for a little progress update on the garden office and I'll be back next time with the interiors of the space. This is the most exciting part for me. I adore styling the room. So I will see you next time. Bye!